In the field of physics, there was a theory known as atomism, that atom is the smallest part of matter which cannot be divided. This theory was propounded by Democrats, the Greeks, 23 centuries ago. And it was also known to the Arabs. And the Arabic word for atom is zarrah. But today, after science has advanced, we have come to know that though atom is the smallest particle of matter, having the characteristic of the element, it yet can be divided into electrons, protons, etc. So people may think that the Quran is outdated. The Quran does speak about zarra and says it's a minute particle. But nowhere does it say that it cannot be divided. In fact, the Quran says in Surah Sabah, chapter number 34, verse number 3, it says that when the unbelievers say that the hour will never come, tell them, it will surely come with the permission of the Lord who has the knowledge of the unseen, who has in his record the minutest detail of an atom in the heaven and in the earth. And in his record is propitious things smaller and greater than the atom. So Quran says there are things smaller and greater than the atom. So Quran is not outdated, it is up to date. The similar message is repeated in Surah Yunus, chapter number 10, verse number 61, that in Allah's record is propitious. Things smaller and greater than the atom. In the field of oceanology, the Holy Quran says, in Surah Furqan, chapter 25, verse number 53, it is Allah who has let free two bodies of flowing water, one sweet and palpable, and the other salt and bitter. And between them there is a barzakh, a barrier, which is forbidden to be trespassed. The Quran repeats the message in Surah Rahman, chapter number 55, verse number 19 and 20. Marajal Bahrain yal taqiyan, bainahuma barzakh la yabgiyan that it is Allah who has let free two bodies of flowing water which meet and between them there is a barrier which is forbidden to be trespassed. The Arabic word barzakh means a barrier and the Arabic statement marjal bahrain al taqiyan means the flowing bodies of water they meet and mix. Previously the commentators they could not understand the two opposite description of the two bodies of flowing water. It says they meet and mix as well as it says there's a barrier between them. The commentator of the Quran could not explain what did this verse actually mean. It was confusing. Today, we have come to know with the help of science that there is a slanting barrier between the two bodies of salt water and sweet water, between the salt sea and the sweet sea. And whenever water passes from one sea to the other sea, it loses its characteristic and gets homogenized into the water it flows. There is a barrier. But this barrier is called as a transitional homogenizing space or area. Both the waters, though they meet and mix, but the characteristics yet remain the same. Salt, water remains salt. The sweet water remains sweet. And this phenomena can be seen in Cape Point, southernmost tip of South Africa in Cape Town, where salt and sweet water meet, but they are distinct. They don't mix. When they flow across, the water changes its characteristics. Similar thing can be observed in Egypt, when River Nile flows into the Mediterranean Sea, as well as the example of Gulf Stream which starts in the Gulf of Mexico, though it flows for thousands of miles. Both the water, salt and sweet water, they are distinct. And if you're traveling in a boat, and if you pick up water from one side of the boat and water from the other side, you'll find that both the waters are different. One is sweet and the other is salty. Even the temperature differs. Even in the area of Gibraltar, the Atlantic, and the Mediterranean Ocean, there is an unseen barrier. And this was confirmed, this phenomena, 
which the Quran speaks about, was confirmed by Prophet Lahey, who is a leading Marine of USA. The Quran asks the people that which of the favors of the Lord will you deny? In Surah Rahman itself, chapter 55, this was then which of the favors of your Lord will you deny is repeated no less than 31 times. It speaks about the sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, about trees, about the heavens, and then asks you, then which of the signs of thy Lord will you deny? It speaks about what cycle, and then asks you, then which of the signs of thy Lord will you deny? It speaks about the barrier between the sweet and the salt water, and then asks you, which of the signs of thy Lord will you deny? The Quran in one chapter itself, it's asking its reader, which of the signs of God Almighty will you people deny? It's prodding you that all these signs, from where do they come? Which of the signs will you deny?